Hello there. You know, I hate myself on my days off because I always want to do stuff, but I'm always the most tired of my days off work. My day job, when I work my day job, I am less tired than my days off. Make it make sense. So yesterday, Wednesday, I overslept a bit, woke up at midday. I thought to myself, I'm going to go out for a little bit, go out and chill, have a little walk, go to some shops, do whatever, right? And go to the cinema on top of that. I was also going to record a couple second channel videos and also live stream on Twitch. By midnight, 12 hours later, what I had done is not gone outside at all, not streamed at all, and recorded two videos, but did not edit them. So for the whole 12 hours, I recorded the two videos, which took 45 minutes. What was I doing for the rest of the time? I don't even know. I procrastinated, I guess. Like, I used to, like, watch a lot of YouTube videos, but I don't do that much anymore. I still watch YouTube videos, but not as much. I used to watch a lot of those, but even now, I'm just like... I just sit down, I'm just like, I'm gonna chill for a bit. I'll start recording at three. I'll start recording at four. I can stream at six, it's all good. And then before I know it, 7 p.m., I've not done anything yet. And I'm sitting there like, how have I wasted a day doing nothing? It just goes just like that. You know, I used to have this problem at school, but like, that's with like homework and studies. I used to like try and avoid it. And I used to procrastinate. I'm just like, I'll do this math homework at like 9 p.m. No, I'll do it at 10 p.m. I used to do that right, but like, that was like annoying things, things that weren't really that exciting, but I enjoy making videos. I love editing videos. I love streaming. You know, I love playing games and I was going to stream myself playing F1. How am I procrastinating doing things that I love? Like, how does that make any sense? How am I procrastinating good things, fun things, things that I enjoy? That's so, that's so weird. And like, there's, there's some sort of psychology behind this. It turns out my procrastination issues are not just about, you know, my school days. It's also about days like this where, you know, I enjoy making content. But for some reason, I procrastinate in making content, even though I enjoy it. It's very weird. Anyway, this is a movie vlog. So it's Thursday now. I agree to an early shift at work. So it's my day in, but like my day job ends at 10 p.m. normally. Today, they asked me to come in four hours early, finish four hours early. I'm just like, yeah, sure, I'll do that. Then they said, you wanna go for a 12, 12 hour shift tomorrow? I'm just like, yeah, okay. So Friday, I'm doing a 12 hour shift. So that's two AFL streams I can't do. Because I finished four hours earlier, it means I can go to the movies. Um, and I'm gonna watch something today and watch something else on the weekend that I'm also looking forward to, kind of, because it's a bit weird. Um, I'll tell you why in a second. So what I'm watching today is No Hard Feelings. So it's kind of a dirty sort of, it's not a rom-com, I wouldn't say, but it's a dirty, college sort of comedy if you grew up in the 2000s i mean i'm not sure it applies to me as much because i was very young back then but like i guess the better way to put it is if you grew up with college time movies and from the 2000s from the 2010s then this is like a callback to that in a way that's what it feels like from the trailers um but this is like this has got a weird vibe to it so there's a 19 year old kid is very awkward socially awkward um just you know he he, he needs more interactions, I guess. He's 19, he's about to head off to college. Before he goes to college, his parents hire an older woman to date him. Yeah, it's as ridiculous as it sounds. If you switch genders, it'd be very weird, to be honest. It's, talk about equality, right? But <laughs> um, I just saw it as a taking the mickey comedy, you know? It just it just looks like something that would be quite funny. And it, the trailer looked like a callback to past movies from like a decade or two ago that had similar sort of like college sort of things. Like I guess like um, Stifler's Mum in American Pie. That's that's a bit, that's a lot more explicit than this, but still, you know what I mean, right? Unless you actually haven't seen that, then you're just like, I don't know what he means. But some of you know what I mean. Some of you from our generation, if, if you watched college type humour type movies in the 2000s and 2010s, you might get what I mean. It seems like it's got a similar vibe to that. So I'm looking forward to that as a callback. But at the end of the day, two parents hiring a mature woman to date their 19-year-old son before college is a very strange concept. Uh, but I hope it's funny because the trailer was funny. So I hope it was funny. <laughs> Hopefully not all, the, not all the good jokes were in the trailer. Um, Jennifer Lawrence is the star. He, she's the woman. So <laughs> that's uh, that's one thing. I'm looking forward to it, but I'm also like really baffled that that they're making this, that they made this. So, uh, I mean, I hope it's funny. That's all. It's, I'm hoping for a good comedy. 
And what I'm watching on the weekend is Asteroid City. Um, honestly, I'm watching it for the title and the cast. Uh, Tom Hanks is in it. Jeffrey Wright, Scarlett Johansson. Um, Leif Schreiber is in it. Who else is in it? Brian Cranston, Edward Norton, um, Maya Hawke. There's, there's other big names as well. I'm just like, wow, that's a good cast. So I looked into it and uh, I think the synopsis says there's a grieving father who takes his technology obsessed family to a convention sort of. Asteroid City is like a little like convention presentation or whatever. And then something, an event happens in the middle of this event. So something happens that causes him to change his worldview. So I'm assuming an asteroid hits the city. I'd, that's what I, I'd, <laughs> that's all I can think of. Because the synopsis is very vague. Anyway, yeah, we got that movie. It's it's like a comedy, drama, romance, whatever, sort of sci-fi. It looks like a convention is interrupted by an asteroid. Something like that. I don't even know. But it's it's mystery, I guess. And I'll go and watch it. And then I watched that on the weekend. But today, Thursday, 7.15 showing, 7.15 p.m. I got to leave soon, actually. Watching No Hard Feelings. Um, it's a very weird concept, but um, just hopefully it's good. <laughs> That's the main thing. Hopefully it's good. So, uh, yeah, let me head on my way and uh, I'll let you know what I think of No Hard Feelings in the next clip. Okay, maybe not this clip, but soon. It's bloody raining. Like, what on earth? We've had a heat wave the past two weeks and now it's raining. <laughs> not the first day it's happened the last two weeks. English weather. This is England, right? The weather, no matter what the season is, no matter how hot or how cold, the weather is far too unpredictable. Now this is going to be so good, I'm sure. I love Christopher Nolan's favorite director, so I can't wait for next month. I might have to, because it's Nolan and he makes movies for cinema. I might have to go BFI IMAX. BFI IMAX is the largest cinema screen in the UK. It's really good, like, and it's 70 millimeter. It's huge. I've been in there to watch Infinity War, Endgame, Godzilla King of the Monsters, Godzilla vs Kong, and uh, a few other things as well um, that I've seen there. And the dark, I've seen a Dark Knight in there, 10th anniversary I went there. It's so good. So I, I think I've got to go there. It might cost like 30, 40 pounds, which is a lot, but I might have to go there to see Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer might be worth the trip, I reckon. I tried to avoid it, but could not resist. All right, so that was a mixed bag, very mixed bag. Parts of it were funny, parts of it were hilarious, but um, there was a lot of cringe, a lot of cringe. Some of the scenes between them, like it was well, well acted, like they did a great job acting of it because some of the scenes between them are so awkward that even I felt embarrassment by it. Even I felt secondhand embarrassment by some of the conversations, some of the bits of dialogue. I'm just like, oh my days, this is so bad. <laughs> so bad in a cringy way it is funny too um especially to uh, some woman does a woman like on the other side of the screen she was dying laughing for like half the movie i'm just like all right it's not that funny but yeah i thought it was funny i thought it was hilarious but half the time it was very cringy and i was genuinely face palming like there are some scenes i was sitting there like oh no <laughs> oh no i couldn't i couldn't believe my eyes um i'll give it a six out of ten <laughs> i'll give it a six out of ten um there's, there's too much cringe for me to put it higher up but uh yeah it's not it's not as bad as i thought but it's also not that great either it's it's cringe it's a lot of cringe but also funny so yeah but they nailed the acting both actors nailed the acting they nailed the vibe very well just a little too well because it's so cringy one more thing right correcting myself on the premise so the parents were not looking for a woman they were looking for someone early 20s so still older but not that much older they're looking for someone like a few years older than their son uh, except jennifer lawrence's character applied for the job because she needed the money so uh yeah <laughs> so the parents weren't as creepy but still very strange jennifer lawrence is very creepy though <laughs> not her as a person i mean her, her 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 character was definitely a little creepy All right so it's sunday afternoon i have spent the last three days working quite a lot actually um friday did a 12-hour shift so I went in four hours early to 12-hour shift saturday my day off i did four hours overtime in the morning um and then now it's sunday i actually wanted to ask for a full day yesterday but they were like no nah, there's not enough work for the full day i'm just like okay they asked me like you want to come in on sunday as well sunday morning i'm just like you know what i'll pass on that because i was so tired from the three days i'm just like if i can stay in an hour stay but 
I'm not coming in on Sunday. So I'm just like, nah, I'll take my day off. So, uh, but I could have done that and then gone to cinema anyway. But regardless, I've had time to record and stream. And uh, now I'm currently waiting for a video to upload. And uh, yeah, we're gonna go and watch Asteroid City. Um, I wanted to avoid the trailer, keep as much of a mystery as possible. But I accidentally, I mean, I saw the trailer watching um, the previous movie. It was played in the cinema. So I saw the trailer for the first time. I wanted to keep it a mystery to myself. Uh, but yeah, it's still a mystery, but um, as far as I know, it's one of those, there's an alien among us. So amongst this community, amongst this convention, there's apparently one alien. And apparently they are quarantined in this town until they find out who the alien is. I think, I think it's that. It sounds like a very um, Oscar verbi version of Among Us. <laughs> but uh, hopefully it's good. I hope it's good. So... Uh, Let's head to the cinema. All right, no nachos for me today, just some really nice salmon. Yeah, I don't know what to make of that, to be honest. Like, it, it was good. I, I liked it. The performances were all good, etc. But yeah, this, the story just confused me. Also, I've got it wrong like a few times now. Um, basically, an alien arrives, but they're all gathered in this city, and then the attraction of the city is there's an asteroid crater from a meteorite from like thousands of years ago. So that's the tourist attraction basically. That's why everyone's there. And then an alien arrives. Alien arrives and then the government quarantines them to try. Yeah, sorry about that. It was a bit windy for some reason, even though it's very hot and quite calm actually. But um, yeah, um, there's actually, I'm in a car park and there's a driver on the left of me and a driver on the right of me. I wonder if they're looking at me. They're not, they're not. But uh, yeah, we're parked in between a Krispy Kreme and a McDonald's. I wonder what for. For conversion of the city, that's a tourist attraction. An alien arrives there and leaves. And then the government wants to lock down the city to stop people from exposing that there's aliens, basically. They want to hide aliens by blocking these people from leaving. Um, so yeah, that's as much I can say about spoiling it. Um, so yeah, um, I don't know what to think of it. Because it's very strange, the way it's filmed is very interesting, unique and strange. Great acting. I had a good time watching it. I just have a hard time understanding it. What's the message of this movie? That's what I'm confused about. I don't know what rating to give it. <laughs> I'd say I'd give it an 8 based on, you know, I was intrigued and interested the whole movie. Um, it was all dialogue, you know, nothing really happens. I'm just confused. It's, it's left me confused. I'm just like, okay, certainly wasn't a bad movie, I just don't understand it. But um, yeah, um, there's a lot of big names by the way, it's not just who I mentioned. There's a lot of big names from a lot of things I've seen um, and things plenty of people have seen. It's actually incredible how big the cast is. Some are just like short scenes and cameos, but a lot of them are there for, you know, a decent amount of scenes. Some characters are there for like one scene, but they kind of steal the show that scene um, So many great actors not just big names, but not so big names great performances all around And I think everyone shone. I don't think there's really a star um, There is the main character, but I don't think there's really a star. So yeah, I'll give it an 8 out of 10 Just this is based on the acting and the scenes I'm just confused what the movie means like why have I watched like I've watched it and I'm just like right so what was that all about then? Because I can't even tell you what it's about apart from what I told you. It's, it's confusing me. <laughs> so uh, if you watched it, let me know what the whole point of this movie is because I'm very curious. But um, I I've given a good review, but I'm also confused. So yeah, we'll just leave it at that. This is your boy Davidoff. Please like, share, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Have a good day and see ya.